Hey there, amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in. We have an awesome new series that we're debuting today. So glad that you could join us. Get your coffee and take some notes because this is all about taking small improvements in different areas that all lead up to big, massive change. Um, too many people are searching for the silver bullet, the quick fix button, but I've looked around for a while and it doesn't exist. It's all about dedicating ourselves to continually improving. And while we can do this on our own, typically it's best to have a guide. And we have a guest guide today. Um, this is Amplified Business Advisor Podcast Series. And our guest today is Jenny Moore. She is a rock star professional who, there's my little slides. <laughs> um, who is a sought-after accounting expert that helps consultants, digital agencies, e-commerce businesses simplify their bookkeeping by optimizing their systems. So if you're a fan of growth amplifiers, you know that we're a fan about optimizing systems. Um, her business, which you can look up more details at moredetails.ca, makes bookkeeping efficient and business decisions easier for breweries, agencies, e-commerce owners, and more. She's very diverse and she's located in um, Belleville, Ontario, Canada. So welcome to G Growth Amplifiers, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Kenny. It's nice to be here. So it's nice to have you join us. And this, as mentioned, is kind of a first um, in, a, in a new series that we're kicking off. So if you're tuning in, whether this is in the live or in the replay, uh, make sure that you comment, share, like and if you have questions feel free to put in the questions we will get them to our guests um and let's start off by doing a quick overview uh jenny of just kind of your background of what what got you started doing what you're doing today oh okay well i started out um being in Sort of in the family way, I come from a corporate background and mm -hmm. was working really long hours. So what was really neat is I thought, hey, it'd be really neat to uh, have a newborn baby and start a business. <laughs> yeah, I could totally do that. Makes sense. It's easy. Um, clearly, that was my first child. So 16 years ago, uh, not only was my first child born, but so was more details. And with that, we've come from humble beginnings of, you know, traditional workflows, archaic, paper-based, all that stuff, to now where we are today, where we help people throughout Canada and the U.S. We work with a lot of uh, emerging financial technology applications that many of you probably are already using. Uh, we work directly with their development to help them create a stronger product. We're an advocate for the accounting industry. And yeah, today we we make bookkeeping fun, if that's even possible. It, we, we, we help our, our clients wake up Saturday morning wanting to do their bookkeeping. Is well, it possible? That, it is. <laughs> I believe it is possible. Uh, and that's, sometimes it has this need to take a paradigm shift. You know, we need to see yeah. things with a new perspective. Yes. Um, and when we do that, we, we think new thoughts, we take new actions, we get new results. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I love that. And I have that similar parallel where I also had that, let me, let me buy a house and get married, have a kid and quit my job and start my own. <laughs> <laughs> All around the same time frame. Yeah. Um, nothing adds to the stress uh, in your life than that, but it's, it's a lot of grit up front and it, and it works out well. If you know, if you have intent and vision about what you want to do in life, it's, it is, it is worth it. So yes, I, I think it was the the passion behind what I wanted to do. I didn't really even know what I was doing. I did that leap about 10 years ago myself and didn't really have a plan. I was like, if not now, when? Let's see what happens. <laughs> but but then I got got involved and and ended up connecting with other, you know, business coaches and advisors to help me learn mm -hmm. what I didn't know because if I didn't, then I would obviously have fallen short. And that's that's what's really cool about how you're able yeah. to help people. Yes. Now, we've got uh, three three core questions that we're looking to cover today. And so if you're tuning in, um, we're talking about, number one, niching your business, the pros, the cons, and how to begin. Um, number two, the best strategies for saving time in your business, what has worked for you. And then number three, attracting ideal customers or clients 
And then again, what has worked for you? Um, so we'll get us started by really focusing on niching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is really, that's a tricky one, isn't it? And um, when it comes to more details, like bookkeeping is a generic service, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that can be, it should be applicable to every business in every industry because you need it. Okay. Um, but as a, as you know, what I've learned in scaling more details is we need to, to be more and more specific about who our client base was going to be. So that came to niching or niching, depending on, right. you know, I go back side. and forth. Who I know, I know. <laughs> as a Canadian, I'm just like, whatever, <laughs> tomato, tomato. Um, so I say niche, but it's obviously interchangeable. Yeah. We, we really, ha yeah, right. We really had to think about who we wanted to, to do business for. And really it has been like, it's changed and it constantly evolves. It constantly evolves. Like for instance, e-commerce has been one that has come up over the last three years for us as being huge for demand. So we've added that as one of our pillars. So I look at niches as pillars, right? Some some businesses will maybe focus on maybe dentists or uh, construction, whatever the case may be. But I think what you need to do is be laser focused on the type of service you can offer to many pill to to core pillars. Mm -hmm. And maybe you might attract a client that's outside of your niche and you need to do sort of a qualitative quantitative analysis to figure out is it something you can take on? Is it something you want to take on? Is it something you should take on? Right. <laughs> yeah. So for us uh, right now, we've we've repositioned to handle breweries because we think they're amazing. We love breweries. I myself am not a huge fan of beer or alcohol in, in general, but but breweries are super fun and awesome and have a great social, uh, especially the micro breweries. Uh, we love our e-commerce clients and we love our consultants as well. So, so that's, you know, obviously, and maybe not obvious, because it's actually a little counterintuitive. Uh, so I, I right now I'm really focusing on the niche of working with other B2B advisors, and whether that's accountants, bookkeepers, things of that nature. And I came to that conclusion very similarly. We have similar paths, Jenny. We have similar paths. But you know, one point in time, I was helping a lot of different types of businesses market, and then they all market very differently. <laughs> yes. If you're looking to market an insurance agency versus a wildlife removal company versus an accountant versus an e-commerce store, how they go about marketing their business is going to be completely different. Absolutely. And it's like yeah. the jack of all trades or the master of none, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's awesome that you took that leap and you said you know what we actually do really good with these types of clients and we really enjoy working with them too yeah we do they're fun yeah you have to pick up on we call them dragons i know we'll get to our ideal client we call them dragons we have a whole analogy and methodology that we use to attract our clients and they have to they have to be really unique it's not just in revenue or how big they're you know, employee basis. Um, it, it also involves human elements as well, mm -hmm. the type of clients we take on. And I think that that's important when you put your whole life and heart and soul into a business, you really want to work for the right people and be appreciated in the right way. And so, yeah, finding your pillars is super important. So whoever your niche is, maybe one, I would say less than five, because otherwise mm -hmm. you're becoming a jack of all trades and it gets very difficult to market and or serve. And then really think about uh, personifying that that individual that you want to attract. So, so the thing that you mentioned there, right? You, you, it's ultimately so not only can provide better service, but also so you're really engaging with that person and they're fitting your your culture. Yes. Um, as I connect with some accountants and bookkeepers, man, that's a, this hump in particular is one that's really challenging them for some of them to to cross over and how do you recommend getting over that hump to say you know what not only is this a good idea but i'm going to actually implement the idea so that i can have it serve me and better serve my clients how do you from do that you concept that of hump? of niching niching how yes. do I, Make, yeah, to niching. making the decision yeah. and saying you know what we're yeah. going to do this now 
Yeah, I have many conversations with uh, accounting pros in my industry and, and confidence is definitely one. And also being able to say no is, is a troublesome thing because as accounting professionals, we're almost seen as um, the financial doctors. You know, right. like a doctor can't say no because they don't like your personality or they don't like your, you know, <laughs> whatever. Right. Like that's just like it's just it, it's the same thing that accounting professionals, whether you're a bookkeeper, CPA or otherwise identified, they kind of have that. I can't say no, I can't do that. And so my first recommendation when I'm speaking to an accounting professional is getting over that mindset that you are a, you may seem to be a practitioner like a doctor because you're diagnosing therapeutic issues with money, right. <laughs> but, but you are in business. You have a business that has the ability to make choice. And so with that comes a little bit of freedom to really narrow down and figure out who you want to work for. But the first thing is coming up with that confidence and giving yourself permission to say no to the wrong type of client. And it may not be that they're a bad client. And we mm -hmm. know there's lots of no bad clients out there, but it may not be that they're a bad client. Mm -hmm. They just may not be a good fit for you. So if you're in a type of industry and maybe one of your niches is, I don't know, the bereavement industry is one that uh, we've been helping out quite a lot, which is outside of our pillars. Um, but if that for me, if I didn't find that unique and really interesting from the tech stack that comes with it, I would probably say no. Like, oh, no, it's not that they're a bad client. It's just that's outside of our pillars or that's outside of our, our technology knowledge. Um, so it, it really comes down to you have to be able to feel confident and politely be able to decline a business opportunity if it's not a good fit. Um, and a lot of individuals tend to take on a lot of clients uh, because they're trying to make money. And the reason behind that is they're not truly valuing themselves. So they take on more work, right? hoping they can make more money, <laughs> <laughs> but they forget that there's only 24 hours in a day and you can't go beyond that. There's no, like it's a reset. It's a complete reboot. There's mm -hmm. no, there's no 25th, 26th hour. So having to say no and value yourself and your services is more important then figuring out who you're going to work for first. I I think that's that's great. Having the confidence and just knowing you just got to believe that, yes, um, others before you have taken this journey and there's a reason they're, they have a saying, the riches are in the niches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once you get there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it starts up here first. It starts right. up in here. Yeah. <laughs> and here right. in the heart too. <laughs> oh, so real quick, we'll go to the next in just a second. But just sure. this is an example like if, if you were a restaurant, right, and serving, um, you could serve, be like a cheesecake factory and serve 30, 50 different types of items, have a phone book and manage all the ingredients and all the different things you could do to run that kitchen. Or you could say, you know what, we sell tacos and really do a great job at selling tacos and being the number one taco shop. So just as a really quick example uh, for someone maybe who's wrestling with that to to overcome it but um, i'm glad you you have that focus and and do yes. what you do because it, it does important. differentiate you which is one of the reasons you're on this show <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of which, uh, which that was a good segue to say you know mm -hmm. this can also help you save time um mm -hmm. but what is what's one of the best strategies that you had for saving time in your business you mentioned you only have mm -hmm. so much time in your day there yeah, isn't the extra hour and when i'm connecting with professionals that's one of the things I constantly hear is I don't have time to I know it's the a classic excuse it's a I don't have time to change I'm too busy right. doing the same thing over and over again <laughs> <laughs> it's a good um, one. yeah it is it comes down to I mean you then you hear the rebuttal you have to make time yes. right so and you know I'm not going to try and sound super motherly with that but it really comes down to, you know, taking away the business model, taking away everything and looking at yourself. What do you want? And those come with goals, you know, creating goals. Otherwise, you're just you're just in the hamster wheel of life. Right. So what the heck do you actually want to do? What is your goal? Is your goal to grow your business? Is your goal to have a monthly recurring revenue of maybe something I would call small like $10,000 a month, or maybe you want $50,000 a month right. each month. 
Okay, so if that's your goal, like not not get off on the whole tangent of 1500 goals, like what is one KPI? What is one goal you want? Then boil it down. How are you going to get there? And that that's how you create the time and everything you do has to relate back to that goal. So if it's spending time with a client, whatever the case may be, it has to be in relationship to that goal. And sometimes it does mean saying no to opportunities or no to certain things because it doesn't align with what you're trying to get out of life in that goal. So to create time, you really need to budget your day in a way that aligns with that. And I'm a big person, like I've worked with the best self journal. I now have the high performance journal. I like that because it keeps me accountable to exactly what the heck am I going to get out of today? How's it going to meet with my goals? And then reflect on it in the evening. And that's just it. You have to question everything you're doing. Does this align with your goal? And so Saving time is one thing. Technology does that. There's tons of technology that's out there. Hiring the right people uh, is important as well. You can't do everything yourself, whether it's the house cleaner, a virtual assistant, an accountant. I don't care what it is. But whatever you're not good at, whatever you really suck at, you need to outsource that. And then focus on what creates that goal for you, that revenue, that purpose in life. So... I think that's really important because you obviously need to service your clients, right? But if you don't make some time to take an action that's moving you towards your goal, then you're never going to get there, right? What the heck are you doing then? You're just filling a meat suit and walking around the earth, right? <laughs> you're just like, I love that like, one. I've never like, heard that one. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, I know, my vegetarian friends just squealed. But I, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, <laughs> it is what it is, right? Like, you just, you have to, you have to have some sort of purpose in life. You have to have something that makes sense to you and what you want to contribute. What is, and if it means looking down the road, what is your legacy going to be? Is your legacy going to be that you work 40 hours a week and on Friday at 5 p.m. you had no idea what you did that week? Or are you going to sit back on Friday at 5 p.m. and go, you know what? I really rocked this week. I got this new client. I hired this new employee. I figured out this new tech. I got a kudos from this person. That's that's off the hamster wheel and that's living life with a little bit more purpose. And one small little tip I, I picked up along my journey is put your own mask on first. So yeah. it's a, it could be helpful. Yeah. That's usually on Mondays, which today's a Monday. Um, <laughs> usually the first thing I do is, is take some time to move a goal forward before I let the work week scare me to saying, I don't have time to do anything else. Yeah. Make and the time. Make the yeah. time. First yeah. things first. Yeah. Uh, so awesome, Jenny. Yeah. All right. And so we're going. Yeah. Go a lot of people ask too about that well, they can't make the time because of a family matter or something. I have three kids. We have an abundant house. We have a noisy <laughs> house. I have a busy business. And I set clear intentions with my team, mm -hmm. clear intentions with my customers, clear intentions with my kids that if I'm working on something, I am focused on that. I am laser focused on it. And uh, we don't work reactively. We work proactively. And it's something you just need to get into is don't feel guilty. Take the time because then you're a better self to everyone else. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. That's a great idea. You're going to be able to better serve your clients when you're mm -hmm. actually taking Composed the time for yourself too. and organized right? and happy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the, the last of the big three today is, is we're attracting ideal mm -hmm. customers. We talked about yeah. niching before. And then mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, they, they need to have more qualities than just being able to, to pay you, right? Yes. Um, so yeah. 
Pain's what strategies- nice. That's important, but <laughs> there needs to be more than that. <laughs> We've actually fired uh, clients that have paid us quite a bit of money each month, so because they didn't meet our methodology. Mm, so, so then, what is you, worked for you to attract your ideal customers? Right? What has worked yeah. for you to to generate those opportunities? Well, would you like to hear a little story? Sure, I would love because to. You have to sometimes to quote a bad movie. You have to start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had mentioned I'd been in practice for 16 years. And at the beginning, things were very traditional. So in those early years, every client was a good client because I needed to buy groceries and diapers. Um, you know, I wasn't really thinking much about my value, my my confidence. I was charging a pitiful rate of like $20 an hour. <laughs> it was <laughs> awful. Um, but, and, and driving everywhere, driving across, uh, if anyone's familiar with Ontario, Canada in the winter time, um, oh we get some really interesting snowstorms. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, oftentimes with a couple of babies in the back. Um, so things were just really hairy and weird. Um, so when it came to this one client, they were in a, um, they had like a catering business with a storefront where they served, you know, espresso and some of the, the food items that they're really good at. This client um, wasn't paying me and I was doing their bookkeeping and keeping them up to date and they were losing money. Oh, like, like a tap. It's like the tap was on and the money was just pouring out of this business. There was not enough coming in. It wasn't managed well. And when I came in to speak to the business owner, provide them with my bookkeeping and my bill and be able to explain, you know, your remittance to our Canadian government is due. It's quite a bit of money. Notice mm-hmm. you haven't been paying money. He actually got really upset and threw a broom at me. Yeah, oh not something you hear often, right? So yeah, who throws a broom at your bookkeeper? But anywho, that happened and not to be worried because I took the broom and I dashed out of that cafe like the Wicked Witch of the West. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, it was kind of- sir. <laughs> yeah, and I totally wish I would have kept that broom because it would have been so cool in my office. It would have been, I don't know. So I'm out on the street, not not literally, but you know, I'm out on the, on the street cause I literally just left everything there and went, Oh my God, I can't believe I was just assaulted with a broom, no less. <laughs> um, but anywho, and I'm looking at this dang broom and I'm like, gosh, like I did nothing wrong. Like I reconciled the books. I made sure the compliance was right. I, I, I did everything really well. What it, like, I didn't deserve this. And, and I had to really think in that moment as I'm, you know, walking home, I threw the broom to the side that, I did have a part in this. I did. My little ego didn't want to admit that because I had done my, you know, perfect bookkeeper routine. But what I came to realize when I was walking home was I didn't value myself. Mm. That was my problem. That was my involvement in this confrontation is I didn't come with enough confidence and I didn't come with enough assertiveness and I didn't certainly define who I wanted to work for. So on the way home, I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't want anyone to throw any more brooms at me. So how am I going to stop that from happening? And on the way home, I just felt like a fire breathing dragon. <laughs> like I was just, you know, how you're just steaming mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so the dragon kind of kept with me. And anyone's familiar with Reiki, you could probably understand a little bit more of the dragon methodology. So the dragon kept being with me. And I realized I'm going to make an acronym out of a dragon. And this is going to remind me every time I interact with a customer or a prospective customer, this can be my baseline. And this is how I'm going to attract this client through social media, through our discovery calls. This is what I'm going to do. So maybe you can use the dragon. Maybe the dragon, maybe it's not dragon for you. Maybe it's rabbit or star. I don't know. Just pick something. You have to pick your ideal client. And for me, Dragon is an acronym. So D means delightful. I only want to deal with delightful people. I don't want to deal with the negative, you know, sort of macho attitude. I don't want that. I want to deal with delightful people that I want to get up on a Monday morning and feel excited, right? I want to feel excited to do their bookkeeping of all things. R, this one's super important, is respectful. Respect goes both ways. My team, I have a team, I have team members, right? So my mm-hmm. job is to protect them from being um 
verbally abused, right? Because right. that can very ha that can happen quite easily behind a keyboard, you know, keyboard warrior. Um, so respect is both ways, and and we expect that as well. A is articulate. I'm a very forward person, and I need individuals to speak up if they're not comfortable. Communication is key for us in building relationships. Two major breakdowns in relationships are um, money, right? It's it's like you're involved in that, um, you know, and you know that's you have to be a part of that. You have to communicate. G is growth minded. We don't want the clients that are like, this is the way we've always done it. So we're going to keep doing that. Those are not our clients. Um, we are in the business to help our clients scale and grow. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for that. If we hear in a discovery call that, you know, we're looking for this traditional, we don't want anything to change and they're just not a good fit for us. Um, o means online. So in the bookkeeping world, we have desktop products and we have financial technology, which is considered online. So we're looking for those tech savvy online individuals or those that are willing to go there. And then N, surprisingly, is in our niche. So the Dragon methodology has been super important to us. It has served me well in 16 years. Um, it's always been that measuring stick to go back to when I'm feeling, and I'm feeling, mm -hmm. if I'm feeling and observing that something's not right, there's some friction, I go back to my Dragon methodology and go, hmm. Hmm. And we've hired, we've fired lawyers. We've hired lawyers <laughs> as clients because they weren't respectful to my team. And it hurt to see that monthly reoccurring revenue go away. It hurt, but it was worth it. So Re refresh me on D. Delightful. 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 Yes. You have to have delightful people in your life that create joy. I think that's a great one. I'm yeah. loving the acronym. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of acronyms. Um, yeah. so delightful, respectful, articulate, growth-minded, yeah. online, and niche. Yeah. So take a moment for yourself to define what yeah. are your qualifiers and don't accept mediocrity. You will get mediocrity, mediocrity. if you accept it. <laughs> You'll get a broom thrower. Yeah. You'll get a broom thrower. Don't get brooms thrown at you. That's an awful thing. It's, it's an awful, awful experience. Don't worry. I went through lots of therapy. It's all good now. <laughs> all right. So we're, this is a, a real quick, um, mm -hmm. just Q&A real quick. We're looking just for a, a small answer here. Okay. Um, a productivity tool, one that comes to mind that you'd suggest. Mm, okay. I would say QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks just Online. Yeah, easy keep your, peasy. Keep your finances together, one place. Yeah. A book or magazine mm. that you'd highly recommend. Oh, there's so many of them. One okay. That... Mike Michalowicz has a really neat book called Profit First. And mm -hmm. I've seen it successfully used in some of my clients. Um, the main thing I like about his books is pay yourself first. So that would be one I would recommend. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> an event or a conference, maybe that. It could even be local, just something that you've attended that you thought was pretty cool. Um, so when it comes to financial technology, there's two conferences I really like. One is QuickBooks Connect and the other one ZeroCon. So you learn a lot um, about how to optimize your bookkeeping system from mm -hmm. attending those events. And dare I say they're a little fun? Um, <laughs> they're a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, a podcast or YouTube show that you find really helpful. Oh, okay. This one's a little bit personal. So I'm really into this podcast right now. And yes, it's it's striking the the mother chord. It's called Fluster Clucks. It's uh, <laughs> helping um, busy parents, you know, non-gender specific, um, managing life, business, and kids during COVID and the restrictions for it and all the big emotions that come with it. And I've been finding it really interesting listening to Melanie. It's it's just it's just kind of like she gets me. It's like she's like listening <laughs> to my life oh my and goodness. creating a podcast. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Almost done with our advisor picks. Um, influencer or thought leader that you'd want to give a shout out. And this could be one of your personal connections that you're like, hey, this is an awesome person that I'd like to just give a shout out to. Oh, gosh, there's so many of them. I'm going to put um, you on the spot. <laughs> I know you are. There are so many of them. Like, I guess 
Gary Vaynerchuk is one. I okay. like his like crush it kind of attitude. I've seen him in person and he's just got this no BS way of just rocking things. Um, he's very forward. I like that and edgy and he's got some neat ideas. I like that. <laughs> Super cool. You've done a great job and I appreciate you taking these questions with no preparation because <laughs> no. this is our first <laughs> series with this format and we were still actually getting this stuff worked out uh, right. recently, but you did a great job. So um, one of the ways that we end these sessions traditionally is just sharing something that you've picked up on your journey that has been really helpful. You've been dropping some great knowledge bombs already, but yeah. if you could share something that you've picked up on your journey that may help others on theirs, a life lesson, it doesn't have to be related to anything you do, but it could, what would that be? Yeah, I would say um, make sure that you're doing something that resonates with who you are. So a lot of times we get stuck with what we should be doing, mm -hmm. whether it's through modeling of society or modeling of money or make sure it's something you truly want to do because that's when your passion shines and that's when you receive that joy. So make that's sure it resonates. That's a great tip. Thank you very much. And if, if you haven't done so, you can check out Jenny Moore in her company, More Details. You can tell she's an awesome amplifier <laughs> at moredetails.ca. That is a special ending of a domain name. So make sure that you pay attention and don't put .com at the end of that and be like, why didn't it work? No, it's a uh, mistake from way back. Now I, I got like some it. water on there. No, yeah, no, um, for $5,000 US, I can buy it, but no. <laughs> there, there, there's a guy who's had KennyHarper.com since like 2005 and yeah, he's not doing anything with it. it. It's just I can't. Yeah. And, and that also goes when you start your business, make sure you buy all the domains before you put your heart and soul into <laughs> it. I was thinking I was just going to be this little Canadian bookkeeper and didn't realize <laughs> things were going to grow. <laughs> right. And you're making things happen. So thanks for tuning yeah. in. Thank you for contributing. Really appreciate you having on the show. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Bye. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.